Nicholson. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, well, my name's Eleanor Young, and I'm here mainly because of the work I did, which is heavily featured on the front of your programme, which was a, a lovely surprise for me, and my favourite gravestone on the back. So it's, that has really made my day today. Friends of Historic uh, Graveyards in Stirlingshire. Uh, there are 18 historic graveyards in our area, uh, all of which are needing uh, quite a bit of work. We have them listed here, and they are approximately dotted on the map. I don't pr pretend that they're 100% right, but we've got them as close as we, we possibly could. And each one of these sites has got a little group working to try and improve uh, their, their site. We're all at a different stage, but we've reached a stage that we feel we have to work together. Uh, there's so much history involved in the graveyards. Uh, I call this stories in stone. Uh, there are trade symbols, as we, we see uh, at this bottom. We've got this lovely pair of scissors. This is one that we have at Logie. Uh, up at the top, you'll see that these ones have been well preserved inside the ruin. And over at the far side, there's this magnificent uh, piece of carving also from our own site at Logie. Uh, the history of this is absolutely amazing. Uh, we have a shoemaker's knife in it. He, the gentleman who had this commissioned uh, owned the hostelry at the tannery, and this was a shoemaker in the village of Pathfoot, and all these symbols are there. His family have researched their stone, and they have passed the history on. This is what people are wanting. They're wanting to come from New Zealand, from America, and have a look at their roots. This particular stone, the family, is in the Netherlands, and they have been over several times. Uh, the history is fantastic. Uh, this gentleman left all of 19 children, uh, which is not mentioned on this stone, but is something that we are learning. And we are building up the history of these stones as we, we look at them. Our project at Logie began in 2007, following an inquiry from uh, New Zealand. And when we went up, we found the site in this condition. Uh, we were absolutely shocked, and the ruin was almost in a dangerous condition. The weight of the ivy was pulling this wall over. And we decided it was time that something had to be done. And we made all the mistakes. We were the beginning. If there was something to be done, we did it twice. And uh, I think we did it the hard way. Uh, it was 2010 before we actually managed to get anything physically done. But we got there, and we're really very proud of the end result. Uh, because of the, what we've done, we've got people, like in the top, who are coming to research their family history. Uh, we have groups uh, like yourselves who come to learn a little bit more. And being so close to Stirling University, We've had parties of students. We also open in the summer and do guided tours for the public on Sunday afternoons. And these have been very, very popular. Uh, so there's a lot that we can do with a graveyard. Uh, sometimes I've been to rotary conferences, rotary meetings, guilds, and I talk purely about it. And we use the subject bringing a graveyard to life because we feel that that is what we've done. Following on this, uh, I was asked to go to all sorts of graveyards all over the place and help people do something with their graveyard. And uh, there's really, I can't go around every graveyard and bring it to life. And we decided that it was time we perhaps uh, looked and worked together because there are other groups. And here are some of the historic graveyards that we have in this area. This one at the bottom is uh, at Kippen, and it needs a lot of work, uh, in, particularly in cutting down uh, all this wildlife. The one in the middle is at Old Kilmadoc, which is near Doon, and it's almost been totally swamped. And of course, we have our own favourite at the, at the bottom corner. Here's a picture of Aberfoyle. I've tried to give you a picture for each of the sites. Aberfoyle are fairly fortunate because their stones have been well preserved inside the ruin of their church. But there is water seepage along the top of the roof. 
and that's going to cause them problems. Each one of us has got a problem that is unique. This is the problem here. Something needs to be done to this ruin to prevent the water seepage destroying the, the building. The graveyard is not in too bad a condition. Uh, a little bit of weeding and a few stones needing to be re-erected. Moving on to Balfron. Balfron has had a group for a long time. Uh, they also do guided tours, mainly by appointment. And all they're really needing is a few bits of cut back along the wall and some repairs to their boundary walls. Boundary walls are a big problem. Nobody is really interested in funding you for a boundary wall. When you apply for funding, they want to know what educational initiatives does this support? A boundary wall doesn't support much educationally, but it can support an awful lot of ground, uh, which is one of the problems when you need to rebuild. So there's a little bit of wall work needing done at Balfron. Uh, this is at Brigoturk, and this is a very interesting gravestone because it has a metal shepherd's crook along the top. Uh, which makes it probably quite unique. There are four graveyards round about Calendar, would you believe? And all of them need something done. Uh, the lady in charge of Calendar is a very enthusiastic young lady. and She regularly goes about pulling weeds when she takes her dog out. Uh, the site at Lenny, up at the top left, was full of weeds and overgrowth. And I think she has cleared that almost single-handed when she's been out walking her dogs. And I think she's come back with a bucket full of weeds every, every dog walk until she's got it clear. But we're at the stage now that that is also going to need structural work done. Uh, St. Bride's, a very small site, a lot of work and clearance needing done. Kilmahog, I didn't know there was a site there till she took us. It's hidden up the side road. And their main one, St. Kessox, is right in the middle of the town. And it is such a shame that that is not open when it's in such a public place. Moving on, Fintry, up the hills. They're very lucky there's no boundary wall at Fintry. Uh, but they have quite a lot of flat stones and there's quite a bit of work needing done to record the flat stones and make sure that they're clear for Gurgunuk, just outside the town, uh, mainly clearance. It's a very old-fashioned traditional church with doors taking into the upper lofts. Uh, not a lot of structural work needed, but a lot of ground clearance. And once that's done, there will probably some work for stones. Kirkomuir, a covenanting site, almost, almost at Denny, right up in the hills. There has been a lot of work. There was a student did a PhD recently and cleared a lot of the stones and has recorded them. Uh, St. Ninian's Old Parish Church hold a service, open air service there every year in June, and it's very, very well attended. Uh, it's a lovely view looking over uh, the, the reservoir at Caron. Uh, but as you can see, some of the stones are needing some work to be straightened up and just a general tidy up. Killen. The river runs along the side and there's a dangerous spot. Uh, so there's once again wall work. Killen is kept blocked because of the dangers of the river. But there's a notice in the gate with a lady's telephone number. If you wish to go and see round at Killen, you give her a ring and out she'll come with the key to let you in. Kippen, where we originally decided we would need to have a look at. There is structural work needing done to the bell tower, and they still have the original bell. The lady in charge of the group is very anxious to have the bell preserved and is making big steps to get work done. But she needs the tower there to house the bell. So there's a lot of work needed in the ruin at uh, Kippen and a lot of cutbacks. Uh, they did some cutting back earlier this year, and as they did so, part of the wall with a neighbour uh, crumbled underneath once the greenery was taken off, and it had to be built almost immediately because it was somebody's garden. Uh, that's a problem. But there's a lot of work needed, and the ground is very, very uneven. 
boundary walls, uh, the end of my existence. Uh, I, people think I dream about boundary walls, but it, it has sort of got to that stage. This is us back up at Logie. This picture was taken last year, and you can see the state of the boundary wall. We've been very lucky. Ochel's Landscape uh, funded us 16,000, and we got the boundary wall along the road we done. Uh, and well, you work with priorities. The long road was a dangerous one if it collapses as an accident with traffic. There is nothing behind there really to worry about, except the other side is a 15-foot drop into the burn. Uh, it, was, it was like that. We've been trying to raise funding, not terribly successfully. The latest or the last estimate I had was 50,000 because the ground, the 15-foot drop underneath, there's nothing to build the four-foot wall on. So we are going to have to do some kind of ground stabilization. Uh, for the last three years, we've been trying to raise funding for this, not terribly successfully. Uh, we were offered 3,000 from a local charity uh, when we managed to get the rest of it. So we're still waiting. Uh, unfortunately, in June of this year, Storm Hector arrived and took it down. So it's now gone completely, which actually meant we had to shut. We couldn't do our guided tours in the summer because we had to wait for planning permission to put up the safety fencing. So we lost a little bit of our revenue uh, over the summer because people do give small donations when they come, and uh, we, we lost that. The stage we're at now, we've had a structural engineer has looked at it and is going to decide three methods of which a uh, historic environment will choose the best one to stabilize the ground underneath. And then we'll be able to start looking for funding and hopefully uh, get the wall uh, back up and running. So what do we need? Oh, sorry, I've missed one. I've got old Kilma Dock here. Uh, I'm heading ahead of myself. Old Kilmadoc, it's a way up. You've got quite a walk through the woods at Old Kilmadoc, and they have got this ahead of them, but they've got a very active group which they call Rook, the restorers of Old Kilmadoc. Uh, and the Rooks, he said, he describes it, the Rooks are pecking away. So the Rooks are pecking away at Old Kilmadoc and cutting down, and I believe there's quite an improvement since these pictures were taken. St Ninian's, any of you who are local uh, will know St Ninian's old, the big church, uh, and they have this medieval, they're very proud of this medieval stone. Uh, there's a lot of work needing done. Their chancel area has been uh, repaired. They don't have a lot to do with buildings. Their boundary wall is in good condition. Their gates were recently knocked down by a lorry, which was the best thing that could have happened to them, uh, because the the company that owned the lorry had to repair the gate and part of the wall. So, you know, good can come out of bad. So they've not got too much to worry about, but they have a huge number of stones needing to uh, be re-erected. Thornhill, mainly cutbacks. Uh, you can see the damage, the overgrowth, when it's just left neglected. It eats away into everything. So what we need, mainly, is cutbacks, uh, this kind of cutback, not financial cutbacks. Uh, we need a lot of people out with their garden tools and their barrows and uh, taking things away uh, just so that we can uncover. If you've come from Australia to look at your family stone and discover it's totally uncovered, it's rather a wasted journey. Uh, we want people to be able to come along and see them. Back. Oh, is that one? That one. Ironwork repairs are needed. Uh, we had this at Logie. We have managed to get that attended to. We now have our railings painted. At Kilmadoc have still got up. But that is work that our volunteers can do. There's not a problem in getting these things done. As long as the people turn up uh, to, to come and... I'm going the wrong way. Uh, come along and help. These are some of the volunteers that uh, we have had doing bits and pieces. Top is a lady at Kippen uh, working on the ground. Uh, I love these two gentlemen that are almost lost in the overgrowth down at the bottom. And you can see the 
railings up there being painted by uh, a volunteer. Work is needed on the gravestones. Work as simple as taking the moss off carefully, having them re-erected, cutting the edges round about them so that you can read them. Uh, our cemeteries department has been very, very supportive and is willing to help re-erect stones as the project goes on. That they call their donation in kind. Boundary walls. This is old Kilmadoc. It's got a huge wall the whole way around. Perhaps not just so important because it is mainly fields, but we want everything brought up to the same standard. To do that, the first thing we need to do is have all the sites surveyed to a uniform standard, and then we will know roughly what we're needing. We hope at the end of the day to be able to produce a book and a guide of uh, a graveyard trail round Stirlingshire uh, that we can use. We want to get young people involved, we want to get students involved, and a graveyard trail round the area seems a good way and educational, which will help for the funding. Uh, these are just some of the repairs that we see that are needed round about cracking in the wall, ruined walls, uncovered grass. We always are looking for volunteers, so any of you who are local to any of these sites, each site does have a group with somebody working. And my final side is money matters. Uh, we've got the dream. Uh, we've got 18 enthusiastic groups. We've started working on every site. We've got the ideas for the future. Uh, we want to increase our genealogy. We want to increase work with the schools in each area. Uh, for our initial survey, we estimate we're going to need about £10,000. And that's before we start working on the walls. Uh, as I say, dreams don't work unless you do. It's the volunteers we need. So any of you who are local, any of our sites will welcome you. Thank you very much. Thank you.